What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you're having a good week. Today, we're going to be continuing our series on the Word of Faith movement. So let's delve in. Hello, everyone. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. A study on the Word of Faith movement would be incomplete without mentioning Kenneth Hagin. Some Christian discernment teachers consider Kenneth Hagin to be the father of the Word of Faith movement. In chapter 4 of his title, A Different Gospel, D.R. McConnell describes the role of Kenneth Hagin in the faith movement. I'd like to highlight some of his points from this chapter. While there is debate surrounding the exact origins of the teachings of the Word Faith Movement, there can be little doubt that Kenneth Hagin is one individual who helped make the group into one of the largest and fastest growing movements in modern Christendom. Born Kenneth Irwin Hagin in Texas on August 20th, 1917, Hagin was born prematurely with a heart defect. His condition worsened in his adolescent years. At age 15, Hagen became incapacitated and remained in a state of paralysis and mental delirium for 16 months. During this time period, two major events occurred. First, Hagen claims he went to hell three times. And second, Hagen claims to have had a revelation of Mark 11, 23 and 24. He believed that this text meant that if you believe in your heart and say it with your mouth, you shall have whatever you say. Hagen began putting this into practice. And though his healing did not come for eight more months, and despite the fact that he continued to experience periodic symptoms for years afterward, he felt he was healed. Though many extraordinary events were purported to have occurred during Hagen's early teaching years, he later considered it to be a failure because he felt he did not have the anointing at the time. In the post-World War II era, Hagen worked in the healing circles of William Branham, Oral Roberts, and Gordon Lindsay. At precisely 3 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon in 1943, Hagen claims he received the gift of teaching. Based on his own words, something dropped down on him, and now he had a mystical anointing. His call to the prophetic office came nine years later in 1952. Hagen claims to have had many visions and revelations, and eight personal visitations from Jesus. Kenneth Hagen's theology cannot be divorced from these alleged visitations. In at least three of Hagen's books, he engages in scriptural interpretation with Christ as a result of his private conversations with Jesus. He describes how Christ instructed him and in how to be led by the Spirit so that visits by Jesus would no longer be necessary, although they continue to occur throughout Hagen's life. The visits by Christ were not merely for Hagen, but for the instruction of the church as well. Hagen claims that Jesus taught him how to get rich by obeying the inward witness. Hagen's general pattern of revelation can be summarized by the following five points. One, Christ appears to him, normally at a point of need in Hagen's life. Two, Jesus imparts a new doctrine to Hagen. Three, Hagen is skeptical at first. But four, Jesus provides Hagen with proof from scripture, and Hagen is convinced. And five, Christ commands Hagen to give the new teaching to the church. One of the notable characteristics of Kenneth Hagen's teaching is the threats of divine judgment on those who reject his prophetic instruction. When Hagen's own wife and two others questioned whether the levitations that occurred at Hagen's church were authentic, it is claimed that the next day a slight touch from Hagen felt like a hit from a baseball bat and they were knocked to the floor. The subject of Kenneth Hagen's plagiarism of E.W. Kenyon is a large one, and it has been covered by others, so I won't delve into it here. I refer you to the work of McConnell, as well as my friend Justin Peters in his Clouds Without Waters presentation. But let us now turn to a short criticism of Hagen. If the true Jesus had indeed appeared to Kenneth Hagen, Christ would never contradict the words of Holy Scripture. All private revelations, visions, and dreams must be tested by the sacred word. Remember, the Apostle Paul said, that even if an angel from heaven should preach a different gospel than the one Paul delivered, that angel is to be accursed. As pointed out by D.R. McConnell, the fundamental error of Hagen and the Word of Faith movement is to align one's own teaching with that of God's, while ministers of the Word can and should speak with tremendous conviction. It is a huge mistake to equate a preacher's words 100% with God's words. Men as renowned, gifted, and brilliant as John Calvin and Martin Lloyd-Jones have erred in some areas. Additionally, Hagen's threats of divine judgment on those who challenge his prophethood are scare tactics that can easily result in followers being afraid to think for themselves. In summation, Kenneth Hagen's theology must be judged by the same standard as all of ours. The scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments are the only infallible source of authority, not purported private revelations and visions. We are on safe ground when we judge Hagen, ourselves, and anyone else by that same inerrant standard. Ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, 
be sure to do so in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.